Nowadays, there's a pill for just about everything, and it seems the older you are, the more you take. Up to 40% of elderly people take five or more medications every day. It's a phenomenon known as polypharmacy, where patients are on five or more medications, some of which are doing more harm than good. It's just that our psychology and our culture prefers to give medications rather than to withdraw them. Whether they are prescribed or complementary medicines, Australians consume more than 40 million pills each day. Patients may be accessing consultations from a number of different doctors and then seeking medications from a number of different community pharmacies. There's no one person to overlook all of those drugs together and that's when people really run into trouble. In fact, each year, over 140,000 Australians are hospitalised because of problems with their medicines. Adverse drug reactions are probably the fourth or fifth greatest killer after heart disease, cancer and stroke. And the bad news is that with our ageing population, the problem is getting worse. The older you are, the more health problems you have and the more specialists you see. Then you wind up on multiple medications, putting you at risk of dangerous drug interactions. Most commonly we see confusion and delirium, falls and injury as a result of falls, and general symptoms like weakness and nausea. Jack McAnally was admitted to hospital after he fell and broke his hip. And um, how's your walking been going? Oh, slowly. His medical records show he's on 19 different medications. Oh, there's no tenderness there. I felt a headache come across here, and then I felt a uh, nausea. Could I see you walk? Would you be able to take one or two steps for me, do you think? Professor Lakuta is now trying to work out which of Jack's medications are causing him problems. Some of his heart tablets were interfering with the diabetic tablets. So they're trying a different tablet and seeing one doesn't interact with the other. They'll give us a list when we're ready to leave hospital of what he will be taking once he goes home. Across the ward, Mrs Meldrum has just been admitted. She's also on a cocktail of drugs. I don't know exactly, but uh, I would say around 25 to 30. Wow, that's almost a meal. I take uh, arthro-aid for joints, a pill for heart and fluid. I have two that look at the reflux, the chest pain, angina, one that looks after my bladder, and the mood swing I do need. Because and I the can, list goes on. And the list goes on, yes, it goes on and on. Our typical patient is on between five and ten medications, and I would say without exception, there are in drug interactions in all of these patients. The common ones we would see would be interactions between drugs that cause bleeding, so these are the various drugs used to treat heart disease, and drugs that lower blood pressure and drugs that act on the brain, so sedative drugs and anticholinergic drugs. Adding to the problem are complementary medicines. High doses of vitamin E used to try and delay ageing, but in fact increase bleeding, so it can interact with other drugs that are used to treat heart disease and increase mortality. Ginkgo biloba is used by some people to try and help with their cognitive impairment, and that also will interact with antiplatelet drugs and anticoagulants. St John's wort is typically taken by people who have problems with depression and it will interact with the anti-depression, antidepressive drugs that people are taking. If you don't know that someone's taking something, you can't even begin to tell them that, hey, the reason you've got that dizziness when you stand up is probably because you're taking that extra medicine. The problem is clinical trials test the safety of individual drugs. But no one is testing whether multiple medications interact with each other. Clinical trials, without exception, exclude people on polypharmacy. So we just don't know whether treating hypertension in someone who's already been treated with depression and, and uh, osteoarthritis is of benefit. Yeah. 
The other oversights in clinical trials are that drugs are always tested on young healthy volunteers and only for short periods of time. The clinical trials do not include um, much older people, so people in their 80s and beyond. The long-term use of these medications is associated with adverse drug reactions that we just weren't aware of when the drugs came onto the market. Mrs Thorburn came to hospital a few days ago feeling unwell. She was on five medications. I was vomiting and very, very sick. And uh, he seemed to think that it was the tablets. Over the last week, her doctor has been slowly reducing her medications. How well, do you feel? Well, I feel terrific. Mrs Meldrum often asks her doctor to reduce her medications. One doctor told me that he would take as many as I liked as long as I took the blame if I dropped dead. He said, because who knows which ones are keeping you alive. And at 86, I don't want to drop dead. There's a fear of litigation. So doctors are concerned that if they don't prescribe medications, they will be um, sued for inappropriate withholding of medications. New research has developed a tool to help doctors work out which drugs are causing problems. It's called the Drug Burden Index. Looks at a person's total exposure to high-risk drugs in terms of both how many of those high-risk drugs they're on and also what dose they're on. Here we've got an example of one patient. We note down what medicines they're on, we look at the dose they're on, and then we work out the Drug Burden Index. So what does a total of one mean? You could say that these two drugs that she's on are slowing her down as much as having depression plus heart disease plus lung disease. So ideally you'd like to take the patient off these drugs? You would, yes, you would aim to get this person's drug burden index down to zero. But in many cases, patients will have to stay on certain drugs. So substituting one for another will help to at least reduce the patient's score. Another way to tackle the problem is to focus on pharmacies, where the drugs are dispensed. One idea is to give pharmacists electronic access to a patient's full drug history. Electronic health records will have a massive impact on polypharmacy by allowing uh, both the doctor who is prescribing the medication and the pharmacist who is dispensing it to view that patient's entire health and prescription record if the patient elects that to be so. In the meantime, there's a government program available called the Home Medicines Review. This enables you to have a pharmacist come to your home and conduct a comprehensive review of all your medications. Anyone can access it. It's a Medicare-funded Commonwealth program. If you talk to your GP about it, they can organise it, or often the GP will actually initiate organising it. And most community pharmacies will have a pharmacist who's accredited to do home medicines reviews and will come out and do that for you. We'd certainly encourage customers or patients to establish a relationship with a community pharmacy so that at any time when a, when a medication is dispensed, um, it is dispensed with full knowledge um, and um, availability of that person's medication history. It's been two weeks and Jack McAnelly has returned home with a new list of medications. He's not taking less, but some of the tablets did change. Oh, I feel pretty good now. I'm starting to get, I feel I'm getting better. Before, I could feel myself going backwards, getting weaker every day. So just by changing the combination of drugs, you felt better? Oh, yes. Well, I got it 100 100%. One of the joys of geriatric medicine is stopping medications and seeing people get better. We have phoenixes that rise from the ashes in geriatric medicine, unlike any other specialty people who come in that are very unwell. And by the simple um, intervention of stopping medications, we see people get better. I'm going home tomorrow and I'm not having any medication. Are you pleased about that? Of course I am. I'm happy as can be. <laughs> and I'll be in the garden as soon as I get home. <laughs> but before you go throwing away your pills, you should always consult your doctor. <laughs>